In this module we will discuss one last aspect of transmission lines and we will conclude with that. This is a situation where the driver connecting the load and via a transmission line is actually driving a capacitive load. Something that you would see when a CMOS is pulling up or pulling down and it is driving one more CMOS which would of course pull down or pull up in response to the initial CMOS inverter. Okay. And on a printed circuit board or on a computer motherboard you would actually see lot of these circuits because they actually form a lot of high speed digital circuit modules. right? So, you will see lot of these situations where one uh, driver is driving not a react resistor, but a capacitive load because the CMOS uh, inverter can actually be modeled much better as a capacitor than as a resistor in the pull up and pull down times. Okay. So, when you have such a capacitive termination, then the bounce diagram thing that we discussed in the last module does not really work to understand how the incident and reflected voltages would behave on the transmission line. So, one needs to go back to the differential equations at least in the simple context and then try to obtain a behavior you know insight into the behavior of reflected voltages. So, we will actually consider that one. Once you understand capacitive termination, it is actually fairly simple matter for you to understand other type of terminations as well inductive termination or possibly a combination of resistors and capacitors. All you have to do is to write appropriate differential equations. So, what is the situation that we have? We will assume one thing okay, because it would simplify our analysis. We will assume that somehow we have been able to match the generator with the transmission line. So, I have the transmission line being again lossless and having a characteristic impedance of R0, but on the source side or on the driver side we have actually managed to match it to the source impedance. Okay. Then I again have a switching waveform which would be represented by a step connected to this one with an amplitude of V0 okay, connected at T equal to 0. Okay. So, you can actually represent this one by actually writing this as V0 U of T where U of T is a waveform which would be 0 for uh, time T equal to 0 and then it would eventually begin to be equal to 1 for t greater than or equal to 0. So, it is discontinuity represents the switching action and that is how we model this switching action by this mathematical function u of t. Okay. Now, you have a transmission line which will have a certain propagation delay t d or equivalently a velocity u. Okay. Let us actually not even talk about velocity, let us just simply talk about the propagation delay over here because the concept of phase velocity is not really really valid in a nice way for this scenario. Okay. So, at the load side I have a capacitor which let us assume that initially is uncharged. Okay. So, I have an uncharged capacitor with a value of C okay. and the voltage across the capacitor that I am looking at let us me write this as V L of T. This L stands for load. Okay. So, this is the situation that I have. Okay. Now, one thing does not really change what does not change is that at t equal to 0 when you switch on this step input to the transmission line, there is the generator side still does not have enough time for it to see the capacitor. The capacitor becomes visible only after two propagation delay times. right? So, only after some reflection happens and it comes back, then it would see the effect of a capacitor out there. On the, how the reflected waveform comes back is something that we are going to discuss. Okay. So, at t equal to 0 the equivalent circuit would still be something like this. right? So, it would have R0 the transmission line impedance is R0 and the step waveform the value of the step waveform basically gets split between these two. Since, we have matched the generator and the transmission line the initial voltage that is launched at z equal to 0 which happens to be the generator side for all time t will be equal to V0 by 2 U of t. Correct. So, this is the waveform that would actually be transmitted or propagated until the load side. So, this is my z equal to 0 source side, this is z equal to load side. How would this wave travel? We already know that a wave that is launched on a transmission line would travel like V1 plus T minus z by V. Okay. V stands for velocity. Okay. So, this expression is still valid because this is something that we saw in the transient analysis that any waveform which has this particular form corresponds to a propagating wave along the positive direction and step wave is also a wave which is propagating along the transmission line. 
So, clearly writing from this expression we know that this is nothing but V 0 by 2 amplitude and U of T minus Z by V right. Now, at the load side what happens? Now, at load side Z equal to L ok. So, the initial wave which you have launched would now start to arrive at the load side that would be L by V, but we already know that the propagation delay T D is given by L by V. Therefore, you can write this as T minus T D the voltage that is appearing at the load side you know at Z equal to L Z equal to L is actually equal to V 0 by 2 U of T minus L by V. So, let us actually write down this one as V of T comma Z. So, this Z equal to L and then this V this is U of T minus T D. What is this expression U of T minus T D? What would that correspond to? It is exactly the same unit step except that it is now delayed by T D units right. So, this would be the unit step which is delayed and then begins to go up at T D ok. So, this is the waveform that is appearing at the load side and it actually makes sense because you have a transmission line right. So, you have a transmission line whose propagation delay was T D. So, you launch something over here this thing would come at the load side after T D seconds right. So, after T D seconds this initial whatever the value that would start to appear at the output of the transmission line. So, this is actually the wave that is going into the uncharged capacitor ok. So, the way to analyze this one after this becomes very difficult because now the capacitor does not simply return a replica of the input right. See if it was a resistor load what would have happened you had a step input which is appearing at T equal to T D right and a part of this one depending on what the value of gamma L would have been reflected. So, if gamma L is positive so let us say this is the part that is actually getting reflected and would propagate backwards, but now this is not the case. The, this is not a resistor it would not simply reflect the replica of the signal that is incident, but it would change the wave shape because the capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously right. So, the capacitor does not show the same kind of behavior as that of a resistor ok. The reasons for all this has to do really with the frequency behavior of these capacitors. The step input can be analyzed using Fourier transform as consisting of an infinite number of sinusoids and then the capacitor reactance depends on the frequency ok. So, depending on different frequencies that are incident which happens to be a step waveform the responses of the capacitor would be different and when you apply so Fourier synthesis you would see that the waveform is actually not exactly a replica of the input ok. So, this is what would happen and therefore, you do not have this kind of a simple behavior when you have a capacitive or inductive or a combination of this type of loads ok. So, instead what you should do you should actually use Thevenin's equivalent circuit. What is the Thevenin's equivalent? Well, I have this source side R 0 with this V 0 U of T at the switching waveform and then I have a transmission line which also has a characteristic impedance R 0 and then I have this load right. So, in this particular case the load happens to be a capacitor it could be any capacitor. Now, what I want to do is I want to find the Thevenin equivalent at this point. What would the Thevenin equivalent look like? Well, a Thevenin equivalent will consist of the Thevenin voltage and a Thevenin resistance right. So, this is what it would look and then you have the load connected to this Thevenin equivalent circuit. How do I find out R T H? Well, all I have to do is terminate this V T H right. In other words make V T H equal to 0 and whatever the impedance that I would be seeing will be the impedance that would be the Thevenin impedance right. So, I would actually be able to obtain the Thevenin impedance this way. So, go back to the original circuit. If I turn off this V 0, if I make this V 0 source go away what would be the equivalent circuit? There would be a matched impedance R 0 and then there is a transmission line ok with which also has R 0 right. What is the resistance looking into this one? No matter what the length of the transmission line is the resistance seen or the impedance or the resistance seen looking into this output terminals of the transmission line which is terminated by R 0 is actually equal to R 0. If you do not believe me you can actually show this one by driving a certain voltage and then observing what would be the current and then taking the ratio of the voltage to current 
which would turn out to be equal to R0 or you can use your intuition from transmission line. A transmission line which is terminated in its characteristic impedance is actually equivalent of an infinite length transmission line right whose impedance would always be equal to R0. The point here is now that RTH is actually equal to R0. What would be the Thevenin voltage? If you want to find the open circuit voltage here, now you do not have to terminate the voltage source. If you find the open circuit voltage, the open circuit voltage would be the initial voltage that is launched. It would be V1 plus value that is coming towards the source I mean the load side. But when would this V1 plus appear? The V1 plus voltage would appear after a time T equal to Td. And we already know what is this voltage V1 plus at T at Z equal to L on the load side. This we already know. This is actually V0 by 2 u of t minus t d right. So, this is a step voltage which appears at t equal to t d where t d corresponds to one propagation delay. So, in a very simple way what you can think of is that when the switch is applied and the voltage changes from say 0 volts to some volt v ok, some volt v 0 that voltage would appear at the load side after one propagation delay right. So, that is what this t minus t d is representing. Therefore, the Thevenin equivalent of this circuit is fairly simple. This is V0 by 2 amplitude. This V0 by 2 amplitude comes because the voltage initially launched will be divided between the transmission line and the internal impedance R0. If internal impedance R0 were not to be there, then V0 would be launched, but when that, that would lead to further complications because now the source side does not get matched. Okay. So, here you have an amplitude of V0 by 2 launched that would arrive at T equal to Td onwards and it would act like a step waveform. This is the Thevenin voltage okay, U of T minus Td and thereafter there is a Thevenin resistance R0. This would be now connected to a capacitor or this would be trying to drive a capacitor whose voltage I am representing as Vl of T. Now, how do you analyze this equation, I mean this circuit, this is a simple RC circuit right. We know that for a simple RC circuit, the voltage across the capacitor is given by the voltage at infinity right, plus the voltage at T equal to 0 minus the voltage at infinity times e to the power minus T by tau and tau is the time constant of the circuit. In this case, what is the time constant of the circuit? This is simply R0 into C right, because this is a Thevenin resistance, this is R0 into C is the time constant. What is the value of the capacitor voltage at T equal to 0? This is 0 because the capacitor is initially uncharged. What would be the value of this voltage at T equal to infinity? That is what would be the value in the steady state situation? Remember in the steady state the capacitor becomes open correct, but when the capacitor becomes open and this is actually a transmission line if you remember the voltage that you see at the load side is actually the sum of incident and so, let us write this as incident and reflected voltage right, but reflected voltage for a open circuited situation in the steady state open circuited situation would be equal to plus 1 times V incident. Why? Because the reflection coefficient for the open circuit is equal to plus 1. Now, you might actually object over here, you might say that well you did not use reflection coefficient value here to calculate the reflected voltage, but you are using reflection coefficient over here to calculate what is the voltage VL of infinity, the steady state voltage. The answer is this, when you open circuit, the impedance can be thought of as a resistive impedance right, for which I can define gamma L. And when you have an open circuited load, you know connected through a transmission line, the open circuited load or even a short circuited load would actually send back a replica of the input signal as its reflection. Okay. Therefore, because of this reason, I can actually use reflection coefficient only for this calculation between the initial switching time and the final steady state value, the exact reflected voltage will be dependent on how the capacitor is getting charged. Okay. So, gamma L is equal to plus 1 simply implies that the load voltage at infinity right, would be equal to V0 by 2 into 1 plus 1 which is V0 itself. Okay. This is correct because eventually the transmission line should not play any role if it is lossless, it would simply delay everything that is happening. So, if you remove that one at steady state, the capacitor is simply connected through this R0 to the step voltage V0. Right. So, the entire V0 would then appear across the capacitor. Okay. 
So, we have now all the information that is required, we know that V L of 0 is 0 and the capacitor is initially uncharged okay, as the capacitor is initially uncharged. I also know what is V L of infinity, V L of infinity is V 0. Now, I can find out what is the capacitor voltage. So, capacitor voltage V L of t is given by V L of infinity is V 0, V L of 0 is 0 and tau is R 0 C. So, V L of t the capacitor voltage will be equal to V 0 into 1 minus E power minus T by tau. So, this is how the load voltage would look like right. So, this would of course, start at T equal to T d and therefore, you need to account for that one as well. So, this is the load voltage across the capacitor and this is how it would behave. It would start at T equal to T d and then it would begin to rise towards V 0 okay. and it would do so with a time constant of tau where tau is equal to R 0 into C. Okay. So, this is the capacitor voltage. Now, this is not completely what I am interested. I also need to make a small change here in terms of T. It should be T minus T D. Okay. This is just a mathematical requirement that I have to show this T otherwise this equation would not give you the correct values. So, T minus T D will give you the correct value. See, you can actually check this one. At before T equal to T D, the unit step function will make the voltage across the capacitor equal to 0 that is what the you have over here. At T equal to T D, this exponential factor will be equal to 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0 and the voltage would be 0 because the capacitor voltage is also 0 here. So, this is captured nicely by this equation and then eventually it begins to charge. To what value it would charge? It would charge to a value of V 0. So, this is all that is there for the capacitor voltage, but there is something that we have not talked about. Will there be reflections? Yes, there will be reflections. How will we calculate the reflection? Well, I know that the load voltage is actually because of the KVL is nothing but incident plus reflected voltage on the transmission line, right? Because you have a transmission line. So, this is the transmission line voltage, let us say V line, and this is the load voltage, let us say V L, and these two must be equal to each other at Z equal to L, right? So, what is the incident voltage? It is V1 plus T minus Z by V, right? and at z equal to L you can substitute this one and the reflected voltage let us call this as V 1 minus and then just leave it at that point. Okay. So, we will just call this as V 1 minus and say T at z equal to L and similarly for V 1 plus at this one we can write this at V 1 plus of T at z equal to L. So, this must be equal to V 0 1 minus E power minus T minus T d divided by tau into u of t minus t d. Okay. So, this is the incident voltage and this is the reflected voltage and the sum of these two must be equal to the line voltage or the total voltage. Right. We already know what is v 1 of v 1 plus of t at z equal to l. We already know what is v 1 plus of t at z which is nothing but v 0 by 2 u of t minus z by v. Right. So, at z equal to L this would be V 0 by 2 into U of T minus T d. Right? So, what would happen to V 1 minus? V 1 minus at T equal to z equal to L on the load side will be equal to V 0 U of T minus T d minus V 0 E power minus T minus T d divided by tau into U of T minus T d minus V 0 by 2. This is coming from the V 1 plus voltage which has been taken to the right hand side. So, this would be U of T minus T d and what you see is that this V 0 and V 0 my 2 will together give you V 0 by 2 and there is V 0 of something. So, I can actually write this as V 0 into V half minus E power minus T minus T d by tau and U of T minus T d. Of course, this is the reflected voltage right at the load. Okay this is the reflected voltage at the load, but I also want to know how the reflected voltage would propagate backwards, how would it propagate towards the source side. You can actually easily obtain that one. So, let us say this is the load z equal to L right? and I am considering some other point along the transmission line which is z equal to z prime. Okay. This is on the transmission line. At what time will the reflected voltage appear here? Remember the incident voltage took T d time 
to go all the way from the source side to the load side. From there, there will be an additional time lag. How much would be the additional time lag? What is this distance? This distance is nothing but L minus Z prime because Z equal to 0 is this one, right? So, Z equal to 0 and Z equal to L. This is the total length L here and this is Z equal to Z prime, right? This is Z prime. So, this fellow must be equal to L minus Z prime. So, the reflected wave begins at T d and takes an additional time of L minus Z prime by V in order to appear at this plane Z equal to Z prime. So, if you hook up an oscilloscope, you see a voltage initially at Z prime by V. Okay. So, if you hook up an oscilloscope over here, initially you would see something at Z prime by V and thereafter a change in the voltage at T d plus, right. So, at T d plus L minus Z prime by V is where you see the change in the voltage. Okay. So, to just account for that one, I can simply delay all these time units appropriately and what I obtain is this expression, which is V minus at T for any value of Z will be equal to V 0 into half minus e to the power minus T minus T prime. Okay. It is the time at which the plane, uh, the oscilloscope at Z equal to Z prime sees a change in the voltage divided by tau. Okay. So, nothing has changed over here except that the time is not exactly the same. So, T prime is actually equal to 2 times T d okay, minus Z prime by V. You can see that this is correct because initially assume that Z prime is equal to L that is at the load side you are in. right? So, for Z prime is equal to L, this would correspond to having the time T prime is equal to T d itself and this is correct because the reflected voltage will begin at T equal to T d. Right? So, this is ok. So, consider now Z equal to 0 which happens to be the source side. So, for source side what you get as T prime that is the point at which the voltage begins to change that would be 2 T d and this is also correct because it takes 1 T d to go here and again 1 more T d to come back. Therefore, the change or the total propagation distance would be 2 times T d. Right? So, this is what the change would happen and this change would begin to show up as the reflected voltage arrives starting from T equal to 2 d. Okay. So, let us also write down the u of T minus T prime as well, okay. just to show you that T prime is also over here, okay. the unit step waveform. So, T prime is the time at which voltage changes at Z equal to Z prime plane. Okay. So, the time at which this would change would be equal to 2 T d minus Z prime by V. All right. Now, look at what happens as the reflected voltage comes back. What is the incident voltage? The incident voltage is still V 1 plus and it is a nice waveform which is going as step voltage at starts at T equal to 0 and goes with an amplitude of V 0 by 2. Okay. So, let us write down this one down here to say that this is Z equal to 0, this is the load side Z equal to L. So, if you are looking at the voltage by connecting an oscilloscope to this one, while you still have a certain R 0 and a pulse source or a step source connected, you can actually hook up these two leads to an oscilloscope okay, and keep looking at what you see here. Initially, as you turn on the voltage source at T equal to 0, you would see that the voltage begins to change and then this becomes V 0 by 2, because this is actually equal to the voltage that is launched on the transmission line. right? So, this is the voltage at Z equal to 0 launched on the transmission line. So, the incident voltage launched V 1 plus. Now, what happens? As the reflection reflected voltage arrives backwards, right? so the reflected voltage arrives at so V 1 minus. In this case, you do not have to write down 1 because this is only one reflection that is going to happen because the source is matched, everything that is reflected would be absorbed. So, V minus T at Z equal to 0 from this above expression is given by V 0 half minus E power minus T minus 2 T d, right? because this is what the value is that prime is equal to 0 divided by tau right? u of T minus 2 T d. So, until 2 times the propagation delay, right? nothing changes on the source waveform or the waveform that you have connected to the oscilloscope over here. However, at T equal to 2 d something happens. So, what would happen at T equal to 2 d this exponential value will be equal to 1. right? So, at 
t equal to 2 d the reflected voltage V minus at 2 d at the source side z equal to 0 will actually be equal to minus V 0 by 2. At the same time your V plus at 2 d z equal to 0 is actually equal to V 0 by 2 because it is the continuous step that is happening. So, what would be the total voltage at t equal to 2 d as the reflected voltage comes back towards the source this voltage actually drops down to 0. Thereafter this step is still continuing right, but there is also this negative voltage I mean this also the charging voltage because of the reflected waveform. You remember how the reflected waveform was going around it would be this particular waveform right. So, now it would begin to rise and to what value would it go over? Well, as t minus t prime becomes very large compared to infinity this exponential goes to 0 and this reflected voltage will be equal to V 0 by 2 right. There is also an incident V 0 by 2 voltage still continuing from the initial value and this voltage begins and goes towards exponentially towards V 0 ok. So, let me highlight this particular graph by sorry one second. So, I highlight this graph by showing you that the voltage for a purely capacitive terminated would be equal to 0 at t equal to 2 t d and then eventually rises towards V 0. In fact, if you were to connect this to an oscilloscope and observe this waveform, you can clearly tell that the load actually has a capacitive reactance and this principle is used in what is called as time domain reflectometers. Okay. In the time domain reflectometers what you do is you launch a step or a pulse more often reflectometer or T d r. In T d r what you do is you launch a pulse or a step voltage which would travel and because of the faults that are located along the transmission line which could be capacitive or inductive or anything though there would be reflections from that. You can estimate the time by looking at what propagation delay has elapsed. So, from the time you can go back and calculate what is the length at which the fault occurs and by looking at the shape of the waveform you will be able to see whether this is a resistive fault or a capacitive fault or an inductive fault. Okay. Just to complete this one the inductive fault would look like this it would actually jump up to a value of V 0 okay, and then eventually starts to drop towards 0. Okay. So, this would be the inductive and this is the capacitive and these are widely used to calculate or to locate faults okay, much like a radar.